trash track, very clever way of tagging um, items in the trash and then watching what happens to them over, uh, over a month or so as they move through the trash systems in the United States. Uh, it looks like a fuzzy ball of yarn, but as you look at it more closely, it's an sort of incredibly intricate display of the proteins in the, uh, fr from the virus itself and from the host it inf infects in, in a very dramatic way. It's uh, really a phantasmagoria of, of fungi. You look at its so intricate details and it draws you into looking at uh, how the fungi relate to each other, the cl different classes and how they're being used in both natural and industrial processes. If you take a look at that image, it looks like a, a ripples on a sea. And then as you get drawn into it, you realize that these, this is actually on a minute scale, nanoscale. So what we're trying to do with this uh, competition is to um, encourage people to think broadly about the way you can bring data to life so that other scientists can understand it and also very much so how the general public can, can really get into the concepts and the ideas that, that, that are behind the scientific uh, discoveries. We can see that with such uh, 3D models is a new way to present and promote scientific data about ubiquitous human viruses. Uh, with these models, we attempt to show the viral particle as close to the real virion as possible. And it gives an opportunity to a wide audience to estimate complexity and beauty of these structures. Uh, we expect that it is crucial to be able uh, to get correct depiction of the environment even for non-specialists. We develop these little sensors uh, that can uh, that are based on cell phone uh, technology um, and use also GPS, and they can tell you anywhere in the world where they are for one year, and you only need to charge them once. A system like Trash is somewhat invisible. To f to find out the actual structure of the system, this new opportunity in technology of having small sensors communicate where they are can help us understand if there are any inefficiencies. Uh, once you learn what goes where, you can see if there are any points for improvement. And also, by informing the public about where things actually end up, there is a prospect for behavioral change. Taxonomy is really exploding in, in botany especially and also in the fungal sciences. And this simplifies it, and it took me three months to simplify fungal taxonomy down to these four or five little pictures. But you don't have to know anything about the relationships to appreciate just the pictures, the different colors, the different shapes, the different forms that fungi take. Um, there's a little explanation about mycorrhizae, there's a little explanation about white face syndrome, and there's a nice picture of how we interact with uh, fungus on a daily basis, our bread, our wine, our beer, are rotting squash and so forth. This image is an atomic force micrograph. It's an image that's very small in scale. It's only about 500 nanometers on a side. And what it shows is a single layer of molecules on a surface. It's actually made up of two types of molecules. And they're just starting to separate from each other, which is what leads to those dimples that are in the image. And uh, the blue color you see is uh, false color. That was just added to make it look nice because, of course, on that length scale, there's really no such thing as color like that.